And so in taking those steps, I said, well, I'm not going to do that. Did you know that that person became the nicest person in the world? <laughs> 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 I had to approach people after you took, took, took those steps. But then again, I go and I say, I don't know. Do you still have your God? I don't know. So what do I have to do? I'm still not going to get, get it. I will go and do the things I need to do that should show in love, but I will not give in. It's still nice. It's still nice. So maybe I should just live this way with this person. That way. But it is not a matter of something that I want to do. It is no longer something in me to do that. It's challenging. Things have to change, though, to your own pain and discomfort. I had to make those changes. Moses, I told the story at the discipleship class. God told Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh. You go to Pharaoh. He tells Moses, Moses, I am going to send you to Pharaoh, and I want to tell you that Pharaoh's going to harden his heart. So he tells him what to expect. Sometimes God tells us what to expect if we're listening. So Moses goes, and sure enough, Pharaoh, let my people go. What does Pharaoh do? He makes it, he tells him exactly what God said. He said, in the heart of his heart, he says, no way. But you know what? I'm going to make your people now make brick without straw. God told him, yeah, I'm going to have your people, Pharaoh, on his heart. But he didn't tell them how the Israelites were going to react. So now the people came to Moses and said, look what you've done. Sometimes we do what God calls us to do, and it may not be pleasant. That's right. See? It may not be pleasant. All right, I want you to last thing before we close. There are three things here that you need to know, three, three parts of the scripture that I'm going to give you. And here's the part of the scriptures I need you to remember. And here's the story. All right. You have to learn. Instead of saying me first, that's the difference. We, we, uh, when you can uh, say, Lord, whatever, whatever you want, that's what I want. See, that's what we want to be able to say. And that's where it starts. Now, there are three things you want to remember here. Number one is that we have to give in to God. When we give in to God, we grow closer to God. But when you give in to God and you grow closer to God, you got to also remember we got to get wise to Satan. Mm. You've got to get wise to Satan's schemes. So you, although you are giving into God, although you're honoring God, you've got to prepare yourself for the, the enemy's schemes. You need to know that. These th three things work together. And so we, when we know that God is leading us in a direction, you know, we want to be able to have, remember, faith that, that, that works comes with wisdom and grace. Wisdom and grace come with wisdom. Uh, wisdom and grace comes with faith. So you got to make sure that these things are together, working together. Now here you go. Give in to God. When you hear give in to God, what do you hear? Quickly. Surrender. What? Surrender. Surrender. Obedience. Obedience. That's it? Love. Huh? Love. Love. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Wisdom. Wisdom. Let go. Let go. Purpose. Purpose. Anything else? All right, give it to God. Wow, I expected more, but that's okay. I'll take it. Step out the box. Step out the box. Give in. Let go. And let God. There are things we have to do. The scripture, verse 7 in, in James tells us, let God be God in your life. Give Him control. Put Him first. Put Him in charge. How do we do that practically? Is again, it's that you got to let go of the stuff that holds you down and you need to trust them. And then he says, grow closer to God. Well, how do we grow closer to God? By reading the Bible, by going to church, by getting involved in the studies. You gotta study the Word of God. You gotta spend time with God, folks. You gotta count on God. You gotta spend the time with the Lord in simple ways. Simple ways. Simple ways. What, what do you hear by simple ways? How can we develop a relationship with God in simple ways? But to me, it's uh, praying before each meal. Praying before meals. 
Can you just sit down and speak with him? Speak with him? Sometimes I have a chair and they have an empty chair. I just got the empty chair like yeah. I'm sitting in it. Oh, I want you to try something. Think outside the box. Why don't you take a Bible, put it in a chair, sit down, and think about having a conversation with God. Set a date, a time and a day. I'm going to spend this time, from this time to this time, here's my Bible. I'm going to put it in the chair, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to have a conversation with God. I'm going to have a date with God. <laughs> Sounds corny, right? No. no. <laughs> it might be hard. Folks, we got to do it. Then it says, let the peace, Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of Christ rule your heart. Now, I, I wanted to break this down so we understand because Christ, when Christ is in our hearts, it, there's something that happens. There's a certain peace that, that occurs. God's peace in our hearts sort of transforms something. This is, and it prevents us from trying to manipulate others, or trying to manipulate the situation. Now, getting wise to the same schemes. What are, what, what are Satan's schemes? Really quick. What are Satan's schemes? Distraction. Distraction. I love it. Now we're talking. Fear. Fear. Temptation. Jealousy. Jealousy. Temptation. Temptation. Confusion. Confusion. Self-doubt. Self Guilt. Guilt. Shame. Yeah. Complacency. What else? Doubt. Shame. Procrastination. Procrastination. Illusion. Illusions. Folks, these are the things, these are the schemes. They are not of God. I got clothes. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. We had the Bible says, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy says, fight the good fight. The good fight. Fight the good fight. So when you hear fight the good fight, he says, fight the good fight for what we believe. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. The same God who calls a Christian will perform this by his Holy Spirit. He will give you everything you need to win the fight. God is faithful, folks. And for those the faith folks that are uh, meaning, finding, uh, losing their meaning for their labor, Sometimes when we can be serving the Lord and we can start to lose our meaning of our labor. It's like a Isaiah. So if you have time, I want you to read Isaiah 49, 4. And he says, uh, I will spend my I have spent my strength in, in, in vain and for nothing. Hmm. This was Isaiah. Isaiah 49, Isaiah 49, 4. He was telling us, I have spent my, my strength in, in vain for nothing. Yet, what is due me is the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. You see? The great prophet Isaiah was struggling with his own purpose. A man of faith like that was struggling with his own purpose. He knew he was chosen to be a voice of God and for God, yet life became purposeless. And so often, we can be doing the mundane and the usual things and the consistency and the rituals and all of these things, and we can get to a place where we lose our purpose. 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 And God's saying, know your purpose. Know who you are. He chose him to be a voice of prophet. He's chosen you to be his priest and priestesses, kings and queens in a world that doesn't know. I want you to bow your heads right now.